Hi friends! So I'm finally back today with a new video and I'm so excited. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Ebony. I'm a furniture artist and I specialize in taking neglected pieces of furniture and turning them into something beautiful. So in today's video, I'll be transforming this dresser that I found on OfferUp for $60. Now that is quite a bit of money, at least in my opinion. I've never, if, as far as I can remember, I've never spent that much on a flip piece. So I was really nervous about this purchase, but the seller was offering free delivery in our city and we don't currently have our black truck anymore. So I haven't been able to pick up furniture in a really long time. Now I've thought about asking my husband if we could use his work truck, but it's a box truck and it would take way too much to fill up the tank. So I just took advantage of the free delivery and I, I paid $60. But if you guys are not new here, you already know that I'm gonna start by removing my hardware. So let's do that and then we'll just move right along. I also wanted to point out that the seller made sure to number all of the drawers with the corresponding slots and I thought that that was a very nice gesture. Okay, so this is typically where I begin to clean my furniture, but I'm going to actually revisit that in just a moment. I'm actually first going to start by unassembling disassembling i always get it mixed up i'm gonna take apart the base now one thing about this dresser that really had me a bit disappointed after i made the purchase is that the base was kind of bowing a little bit and i don't know if it's just because i'm paying extra close attention or if it's really that obvious but either way i wanted to come up with a solution for that and so my initial plan was to try andrea's furniture base um, over from the diy wife now the cost of lumber was just a little bit too much for me and I didn't really want to put all of that money into a already expensive dresser. So um, what I did was yesterday I practiced to see if I could create a platform for the base just to make sure that I would be able to do it before I started taking things apart. And so that's what that whiteboard is there. Unfortunately, there's another fire in the levee. So I had it uh, just got a little bit distracted, but Going back to what I was saying, um, I practiced the day before and I was able to do it. So I figured I'll just show you guys the process on the other side of the dresser. But for now, I'm gonna work on trimming this base part off with my new jigsaw. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this is all in the same day. I just got hot, so I had to come up out of that thermal and then the fire was just creating a lot of smoke and ashes in the air so I just throw on my mask but what I'm doing here is I'm measuring and I'm trying to make sure everything is nice and even before I make that cut you always want to measure twice and cut once or even measure three times Okay, and when I finished, I was just so excited because it actually worked and I was really nervous that I was gonna jeopardize the structure of this dresser, but nothing, uh, nothing went wrong. So now I'm just gonna move on to the cleaning process. Today I'm actually using dish soap because I'm running low on my TSP. Thank you. 
So now I'm just gonna make everything nice and level. I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper and my electric sander, and then I'm gonna finish the remainder of my sanding. So for the top of this dresser, I'm doing three levels of grit. So maybe like a 60, a 120, and a 220. And then for the rest of the dresser, I'm gonna use a 120 and do my scuff sanding. I'm gonna have to hand sand in some areas, but um, yeah, this is just one of those things that it's a process, but it's very therapeutic and you just wanna always make sure and take your time. I just wanted to quickly hop in and just say thank you to everybody that's watching and all of my subscribers. We're about to hit another milestone. We're reaching our 1500 subscriber mark. So I'm just really grateful and I appreciate you all, especially for your patience with me. I know I've been pretty inconsistent, but um, I had to do some self work and I just feel so much better. I'm in a much better place. And maybe we'll talk about that in another video if you guys are interested, but God is good and I'm just excited for this journey that he has me on and I can't wait to see what the future holds for me in this business. So keep your subscriptions because I know great things are coming. But with that being said, let's get right back into it. All right, so now we're prepared to move on to the Bondo. I wanted to change out the hardware only on the top three drawers. So if you're going to do something like this and your drawers are specific to the spot that they go in just be sure to grab the correct three numbers i'm grabbing numbers one four and five or something like that so just be mindful of that and then i'm going to tape the inside of the hardware holes before i plug them and then i wanted to show you that i went ahead and measured my new hardware hole based off of the existing measurements it's much easier that way because now all i have to do is find the center of the existing hardware holes so now that you guys um, have heard all of that, you kind of are familiar with this process. So we're just going to fast forward to the next step. And the next step is to sand everything down. So I'm just going to hand sand them because in the past when I've used my electric sander, as many of you already know, when you tilt it, it creates a dent or an indentation of some sort. So I'm just going to use a, a piece of sandpaper and I'm just going to sand it that way. Unless you have an electric sander that will fit in between, you can always go that route but because I don't I just sand it by hand Okay, so now for this dreaded piece of wood contraption. <laughs> so I'm not really great with all of this. I'm just doing what I saw someone else do here on YouTube. So I'd encourage you to go ahead and just YouTube it for yourself, but I'll try to explain. So I just measured from board to board, which was 14 and a quarter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually drill my pocket holes. I decided not to cut the wood just yet, just in case I messed this up, then I could start fresh, cut that piece off, and I'd have another chance. Um, but like I said, I just experimented with this the other day for the first time, and I didn't have the best experience. So some things I would do differently if I were to do this again. Number one, I would put the clamp on the side of the wood. That way I could just put the board against the ground and drill downward. And then the other thing is I would just invest in a new drill bit. So this drill bit that I'm using actually came with this um, Craig jig, mini Craig jig. But um, for some reason, it's really not that great, <laughs> the drill bit itself. So it's, it's actually pretty short. And I know it's supposed to have a collar on there before you actually start drilling. But according to YouTube, you're supposed to measure like three and a half inches down from like that top of the the bit well this actual bit is like three and a half inches all together so i couldn't really put the collar on so i just kind of had to guesstimate but in this particular clip my drill is dying so it's not the best example i had to go ahead and throw the drill back on the charger and come back later but just know this is the process that i took my pocket holes are ugly but <laughs> it got the job done and it's pretty secure down there so I was proud of myself and I know what to do differently going forward. Okay. I, I 
want to I want to talk to you guys, but I'm driving and I don't have like a um I don't have a mount. But I have something to say. And I just got to get it off my chest. Okay. So I had somebody come in to pick up some chairs today. I did these chairs. It's a set of five chairs. I didn't film it because they're like a project that I started a year ago and I never finished it. So I just finished the project. Now, um, I had somebody interested yesterday, but she offered me $100. I haven't posted for $175. So I told her, no, I'll take $150 because really I just wanted $150 anyway. I just marked them up. So she counter offers me $125. I said, I'll just take $140 firm because I just, I just wanted to get rid of them. So I'm like, $140 firm. So... She asked if she can get the address so she can come get them, and I sent the address, and then she says, actually, can I come tomorrow? So already that kind of just, like, makes me think I can't depend on you. So I'm like, sure, that's fine. You can come tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, and somebody else is interested in the chairs, and then this person is actually willing to pay full price. Now, the conversation kind of started as, are these still available? Can I get them tomorrow? Um, I said if they're still available, that would be fine. I have somebody else interested. She goes on to ask me if I accept Venmo. I said I accept sale and cash app. She says, okay, hold on. Let me check with my cousin who lives in your city, um, and I'll ask her if she has Zelle. I'm like, okay. So she reaches out to the cousin, and then she reaches back out to me and says, my cousin is available between 2 and 2.30. Two and so I'm like, okay, perfect. Um... And there's some other things within the conversation, but I'm still under the impression that the cousin is gonna come and pick them up between two and 2.30 and pay via Zelle. So the cousin gets there, no, before the cousin even shows up, it's like after three o'clock. And I said, is there any update on your cousin? She said, yeah, she's just waiting on a truck because she has nowhere to get there. So I'm taking it as she's waiting on a truck so she can load up the chairs. So when she gets here, instead of the cousin um, coming out it was the uncle and he's like I'm here to look at some chairs for my niece and I'm like oh yeah they're right here mind you at this point it's already like four o'clock the other lady already reached out to me and asked me if she could come at 11 o'clock and I said no um, I won't be available till after three because I want to get the full 175 I don't want to take the 140 so when the when the uncle shows up he's like yeah i'm here to look at these chairs for my niece i'm like okay yeah and then i said and then are we gonna do a electronic payment with uh with Zell? she said that um no first of all he doesn't even know he's supposed to pick them up he's like i'm here to look at these chairs and i'm and then he's like oh wait am i picking these up because I, I brought a car and they're not gonna fit and i'm like yeah from my understanding she said you were bringing a truck and he's like oh let me call her so he calls her and they're talking, she gets off the phone. He said, okay, well, I guess she'll be in touch with you. Um, and I'm, then I'm like, okay, well, is the niece gonna pay for them now? And then, um, or the whatever, I'm like, are you gonna pay for them now via Zelle? And she said, no, um, well, yeah, I have Zelle. Let me, let me call her real quick. So then she calls her. And then she gets off the phone and she's like, okay, um, they'll stop by tomorrow. And so then the girl messages me and said, I never told you that they were paying for them today or picking them up. I told you my husband will pick them up tomorrow. Yada, yada. I'm just confused. I get, when I went back and read the messages, I get how she, I get it from both sides. But from my point of view, why did you ask me if I have electronic payment if you didn't plan on paying today? One, but two, why do you think you, you're a priority over the other person? You don't know I offered the other person a discount. So as far as you know, I told you I had somebody else interested. As far as you know, they're paying the full price. Why do you think I would have ever agreed to hold these for you until tomorrow? If I told you I had somebody interested in, in coming today. And even she even asked me, she said, what time is the other lady coming so that I could beat her there? So why are you asking irrelevant questions if you're not paying today? Like, I, I'm so confused, so now I'm upset. So I just told the other lady that I'm available and I hope that she just comes today because I, at this point, 
prefer to sell it to her versus this other lady because now you just made me mad and i know i don't normally rant but i had to get that off my chest and and another thing like if you're watching this and you buy furniture from people don't ask for a discount holds and delivery all in one conversation i've had people like lowball me and then ask me if i could hold it till the 15th and then ask me if i could deliver it why would i do that why would i give you a discount and deliver it and hold it until you get paid it's not adding up so anyway let's just get some etiquette when it comes to i don't know online online uh shopping okay now i'm at hobby lobby to get the stain that i want to use on this dresser i done lost all my momentum it's been like two hours later i could have been done for today and now I, I bye okay so i just made it back from the store and i'm just gonna go ahead and attach this wood piece so i did add some wood glue for extra security and then you are gonna need specific screws for pocket holes they're actually called craig jig screws i found mine at home depot it's just much easier to find things there because the app will tell you exactly which aisle and which bay so that's where i went and then here is the gel stain that i'm going to use today this is two dollars a bottle i really could have gotten away with one but i'm gonna tell you why I, why i messed up so as you see i'm applying it all along the dresser when you're working with gel stains you don't want to do that you want to work in small sections and I kind of figured that out midway through squeezing the gel stain on the dresser. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just a little flustered still at this point. But I do remember researching gel stain in the past. And I definitely should not have done it this way. But all is well <laughs> because you can take mineral spirits and kind of wipe it off. And it just, it was just fine. So that's what I ended up doing. I didn't film that part, but... After I applied this, I did grab some mineral spirits and just kind of wipe it back where it was thick in some areas and everything was nice and everything was better. I'll say better. <laughs> so the next morning, I actually came out and I applied a second layer of stain and I did it correctly. I did the sections and all of that. But honestly, you all, this just was not up to my standard whatsoever. I'll try to include it pictures of it for you guys videos of it or whatever but on camera it doesn't look as bad as it did in person and I just wasn't okay with it so I decided that we're gonna just go in a completely different direction I hope you guys can feel me you may not be able to see it but you just have to trust my word for it take my word for it um even my husband agreed that it was it was pretty blotchy so He's normally the one that says he can't see it. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. I'm just over exaggerating. But this time he agreed with me. So I knew I wasn't going crazy. So I just decided to prime right on top of this. And then you guys will see where we go from here. Okay, so if I'm honest, I definitely wanted to go and purchase some new paints. I have a color in mind and, and all of that for my next flip. Um, but for today, I just decided to use what I have <laughs> yet again. Um, so this is Linen White. I'm using Evo Paint by Dunn Edwards. I've talked about them already. Um, yeah, so this is a paint that doesn't need to be sealed. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply two coats of this all over. One thing I never included, and I just want to make mention of it because it's something that definitely helps, it always makes a difference, is to sand in between primer, sand in between paint coats, and you always want to strain your primer and your paint. So those are just some tips for extra smoothness. If you're interested in knowing how to make your pieces nice and smooth, those are the two things that I would recommend that you do. But that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'm going to do a second coat tomorrow, but I'm not going to film it. So the next time you see me or the next clip that you see will probably be the reveal of this dresser. So with that being said, just keep watching and I really hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned to the end and I'll catch up with you in a moment. <laughs> 